Right now I'm going to meet my little brother Troy, Troy Reed. We're going to have some conversation about some stuff we've been talking about with each other for 15 years in prison. And now we get to talk about it. I get to talk about it as a free man. Maybe I'm just like the world. meeting rich that night and um i pulled up right here he got into the van he got into the van right here and once he got into the van i locked i knew i had to lock i locked the doors and as i was, as I was pulling off i was asking him because it didn't take long after i pulled off i was asking him like yo rich where did you get that coat from man that that shit was good because i wanted to make him comfortable that shit was good as a motherfucker he's like i got it from my connect so yeah so from there, I knew he was lying. I turned to my little man. I gave him the nod. Once I gave him the nod, my little man spent, because he was short, so he could stand up in the van. Next thing you heard was the two gunshots. Bang, bang. Richard slumped over, and it happened. It happened right here. It happened right here. At this light. At this light, it happened. I'm saying... To in my mind, I'm saying to my little man, yo, he's dead. He's done it. He just got hit with a 357. Twice. The, the only sound I heard was, you know, him releasing his breath. His last breath. So I'm assuming that he's dead. And I need to find a place to put his, you know, to put his, leave his body without anyone seeing me and seeing the van or just so... The only thing, the only place I can think of, and just driving it, and, it, and it's just so funny. I'm saying City Island, but I'm not even sure if I wanted City Island, but I just, I just knew I wanted to get off the streets and get onto a highway. How did you feel? Was you mad? Was you angry? Like, what was going on in your head? I was very, I was very mad. I just killed a nigga that I loved, a nigga that I was getting money with, a nigga that I called my brother. We kept, we kept driving this way, and um, until I can find a remote spot to uh, leave the body. Hold on, go around this turn right here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, loop it real quick. <laughs> it was somewhere over here. So I pulled over like right here, just through the uh, through the van up on the, as close as I can to the rail. Once, once I pulled over, my little man, he's probably about, Gary's probably like five, three, one something. So I'm trying to stay behind this. I'm trying to stay behind the, the steering wheel. I'm trying to stay in the driver's seat just in case we got to pull over, pull off and have him go dump the body. But when he went to go try to dump, you know, get Rich out of the car, he couldn't, he couldn't pick him up. He couldn't pick him up. Rich was bigger than him. So he couldn't, he couldn't move him. To, to, to put him in the woods and all that. So now I got to get, I had to get out the van to go help him. And when I went to go help him, Richard made a sound. So that shit startled me. Like, oh shit, he's still alive. So I grabbed the gun. I grabbed the gun from my little man and put one in his head. And then I had to pick him up. I had to pick him up and, and dump him in the woods and leave his body. I was able to, you know, get him where he needed to be. And then we jumped back in the we jumped back in the van and I made sure I didn't skid off or anything like that to leave any kind of tracks. And we uh and we left. And we left and the rest was 
You live by the sewer, you know, if they say you die by the sewer. Those are the rules of the streets that people live by, and apparently the very rule that Alberto Alpo Martinez died by. Police say Martinez was shot and killed in a hail of bullets during a drive-by early Sunday morning. It happened here on 147th Street and Frederick Douglass Boulevard in Harlem while Martinez was sitting in his vehicle. It is a very preliminary investigation. We're looking into all aspects what the motive may be, including his past. For those who don't know who Alpo Martinez is, he was a known drug kingpin from the 80s, a convicted murderer, and one of his victims, his own partner and friend, Rich Porter. Martinez was notorious, so much so they did a movie about him. Real man takes care of his family. Martinez inspired the 2002 movie Paid in Full. His character Rico was played by rapper Cameron. The film followed the rise and fall of a criminal enterprise of Harlem gangsters. We got a little taste of it in the movie, but in real life, I could just imagine. We found Sean in HD, a social media influencer, at the scene where Martinez was gunned down. He tells Pix11 News he did not know Martinez personally, but... Some people are saying it's karma. Some people are celebrating. And there are people that do care about Alpo. There are people that love the guy. Those who knew Martinez have mixed feelings, either celebrating the death of a man some call a snitch after he turned on his associates to cut a deal for less prison time. In 2015, he was released from prison after serving more than 20 years for 14 murders. He was entered into the witness protection program, but Martinez did not lay low, often returning to the same streets where his legacy started and ended. Somebody just, I guess, maybe went out for revenge, you know, but it's a sad situation, and I just hope, I wish they stopped doing this gun violence. Sean in HD is documenting what happened to Alpo on his iPad for one reason, to change the narrative. I'm out here to try to deter the kids and the youth from ending up like an Alpo Martinez. Perfect.